morning folks welcome back to my channel high tunnel and field tomato production I'm your host Tony wanted to give you a quick update today is April the 27th it's a Wednesday oh it's about nine o'clock in the morning and uh, typical Ozark weather here beautiful day uh, at my farm here which now I've told you I'm in a little bit of a valley I had 30 degrees last night and that's the outside temperature and in the Ozarks, normally April the 10th to April the 20th, where I am, is your last freeze. Well, for everybody else, that's true, but that's not always true for me. Uh, even though I had uh, 30 degrees outside last night, I put a thermometer in here, and the tunnel this morning had 35 degrees. So, uh, I mean, that's cold on tomatoes, but I did not freeze. The plants are going to be great. Uh, I'll give you a little shot here in a little while, but uh, that's what the tunnel is all about, is being able to protect your crop. Now, for April, we normally have four, maybe six inches of rain, but I'm telling you, this has been one uh, really wet May and April. Uh, last week, I had, uh, I believe I recorded 5.6 inches, so I am well above the uh, normal for this time of year. And uh, I would much rather have a wet April than a dry April. When I first put my blueberries out, I believe it was 1987, uh, for the month of April, I had a half inch of rain. And I immediately had to set some plants out and go to irrigating. And I was trying to irrigate out a well, and it was an absolute mess. But uh, God willing, we made it through that. And uh, I've had other months where we've had normal rain. but. Uh, so far this year on blueberries, not had to do any uh, irrigation naturally. Uh, but that's what the high tunnel is about, is uh, even in this wet weather, uh, I've been able to get my plants out. Uh, they're doing good. Now, uh, I checked a while ago, uh, it uh, uh, was 83 degrees in here, so I've come in here and had to lower my size. Now, uh, if you build a high tunnel, here's what you want to do. You want sides that drop down not sides that raise up. And here's uh, the deal about that. If you get raise up sides, when you want to get some air in here, what you're doing is you're letting the coldest air possible in from the bottom of a tunnel. Now, I've, uh, like I said, I just recently uh, dropped the sides on mine just a little bit. You can kind of see a little bit over there. And uh, that's to get some airflow in here. And uh, what I did last night, uh, I had a couple of, uh, uh, I have vents up at the top. Now, I've had some doors in here. Those doors are like four by 28 inches, and they just were not enough adequate ventilation for the summertime. So I had a couple of panels that were just, I've just put uh, greenhouse fabric on them, you know, uh, uh, film. And... Uh, last year I just took an exacto knife, came in here and just cut those sides out so I could get more ventilation. What you want is a chimney effect. When you open up these sides, drop them down a little bit, you want all that hot air to go up to the top and out through the vents. And I've seen folks not do that and you make a mess out of things, you get your tunnel too hot. Uh, the ideal is to vent this thing quickly. So uh, in the summertime, you're going to put your 50% shade cloth on there. You're going to drop the sides. You've got your vents. You've got a chimney. That pulls the heat all up and away from your uh, plants. Uh, when you got a five-foot plant, you want the heat five foot and up. You want to get it away from your plants. And so that's really easy to do. Now, I want to tell you one more thing today. I'm just giving you a quick update. I've got a lot of work to do. Uh, last week, I had, uh, where was I? Seven, eight, nine, ten days ago, when I set some plants out, I set four or five, six of them out, you know, just got going and got about two or three rows over, getting the plants all set out. I came back to uh, water the first ones I set out. And I noticed one of them had fallen over. I thought that I had damaged it. Well, it wasn't me at all. I looked down there and there was something had eaten out just a little bit of the sides, enough to make it weak. Well, lo and behold, out from under that plastic came a cricket. Now, I never knew that crickets ate um, tomato plants. I mean, that, I, I don't know what they eat. Never thought much about it. But I do remember about five or six years ago going to a... Uh, 
high tunnel meeting up in uh, Clarksville, Arkansas, where they had set a tunnel up, and they were doing off-season strawberries. And they had, a little, I believe they had a little bit of heat in there, and this is in December, and so they're trying to do an off-season market. I think it's a complete waste of time and money. That is not the season for strawberries. You buy them from California. Uh, here in Arkansas, nobody wants to buy Arkansas strawberries in December. Right now, today, is the beginning of uh, our strawberry season, and folks are looking for them left and right. You can make a lot of money doing it. But the point is, in their tunnel there, they were going organic, and they had uh, crickets in there. And the guy, uh, one of the workers told me they were battling them. They were having a problem with them. Well, I don't have any problem with crickets anymore because I use bifenthrin, one of the safest and best insecticides there is. And as long as you will, especially early on this time of year, there's no tomatoes on, no flowers on, uh, nothing wrong with using an insecticide. Read your directions, follow correctly, and you won't have a bit of problem. And also, that will uh, take care of any other early season white flies or uh, anything like that that might develop. So uh, let me give you just a quick pan this morning, let you see the uh, plants. I don't know, they're uh, 18 inches tall or so. Fertilized last night. I'm fixing to give them some water this morning and they're really looking good. Hang on. Now there you can see the roll covers. I've already taken them up. I've got my stakes in. And what I want to show you is, there's of course the doors, but right up there, uh, you can see where I just patched over some of my air vests because last night I knew it was going to get really cold. And the idea of that, of course, is to trap the heat in here. And if you'll notice, of course, I've got black ground cover once again early on, uh, not only does it help with weeds, that black heats up during the day and gets the soil extra warm, and of course that heat will come off at night. So, uh, like I said, I was just thrilled to death. I was not really too concerned, but uh, yeah, I noticed that uh, it, I knew it was going to get cold last night. So, uh, as a rule, I'm going to say that uh, most spring nights if I close them up I'm going to have at least five six maybe seven degrees protection and so that worked really well so I'm already three weeks ahead of anybody that wants to set a plant out outside and I don't think you can see them even if I zoomed in well we might see I've got a little bit of some but I mean I'm already starting to get flower buds in the top and I'll be uh, pruning those off uh, very soon. Uh, taking off anything below the, uh, you leave one, one notch below the first cluster of flowers, everything below that you prune. Uh, Y'all would call those suckers, we call them prunes. So, okay, hope all this information is of some help to you. Uh, I'll be back in uh, another week and kind of give you an update and show you the progress. Okay, God bless. Have a great day.